Hello, this is the first bass video for the rock class. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to hold your instrument, how to sit on the chair, parts of the instrument, and how to get going playing. Uh, we're also going to talk about a couple of the notes on the instrument and review the material that you'll be working on in the first and the second lessons. So first, when you sit down on your chair, you want to make sure you're sitting on a chair, not just on a bed, don't sit on the floor cross legged or something, but sit in a chair. You want to sit on the edge of the chair, don't lean back, but you're on the edge of the chair and you've got a good straight back, so good posture. Then you want your legs, I know you can't see my legs in this video right now, but uh, you want to be sitting so your legs are flat, and so there's a nice flat spot to rest your base on. If your chair is too high and your legs slope down like this to reach the floor, well then your base is going to be sliding off your lap and it's too hard to play. So you want a nice height for your chair. If you can't find a chair that's appropriate height, maybe you could put some books on the floor so that your your feet can be up and your the legs can be flat. All right, so now um, once, you're, once you have your base and you got a good chair, you put the base on the right leg and your arm is going to just kind of drape over the base right here and then your fingers will play in this area. Now let's talk about the parts of the base. We have tuners, we have our four strings, and we have um, the, the strings are stretched over this part called the fingerboard where you put your fingers down on the strings, stretched over a bridge and a tailpiece down here. On the back of the fingerboard is the neck. So those are important. Oh, and then uh, across the fingerboard, we have these metal pieces called frets. Now, um, you have four fingers of your left hand finger. One, two, three, and four. This is a thumb. We have four strings numbered from the skinniest or highest pitch string. One, two, three, and then finally, four is the lowest string. You'll hear me say stuff like play the play the first string. And if you did that, you would just strike that first string like that. If you needed to play a note on that string, I might say take your index finger, finger one, play on the first string at the second fret. And then you'd only play that one string at the second fret. Now, you don't play it right on top of the metal fret, but right behind it. So you can kind of feel that fret. Your finger butts up against it, but it doesn't go over. Otherwise, it muffles or it gets buzzy or that sort of thing. Now the right hand, uh, again, we have four fingers, but we're going to be using only our index and our middle finger. And when you play, um, we're going to start with something called the rest stroke. And a rest stroke is where your finger strikes a string and it comes to stop or rest on the next string. So um, first, take your finger and just kind of wiggle it like this. Now, you can even kind of pinch it like an alligator. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rest my thumb on one of my strings here, and I'm gonna take my index finger and I'm going to just strike it. And I, I'm playing the first string, and I come to rest on my second string is pretty, pretty straight. I'm not bending it like this, but just kind of bending it from this knuckle. Now try it with your middle finger. Same string. Again, the wrist is here, just draping over. It's not coming from down here, otherwise you couldn't strike the string. So we've got it here, hand is just relaxed and draped over the top of the base, and I'm now using my middle finger and I'm striking it and resting on the next string, on the second string. Now try index, middle, index, middle. Ready, go. Index, middle, index, middle. Again, you notice my thumb is just kind of resting on a string. Now, um, the, the strings that you have are from the, from the lowest pitch, E, A, D, and G. Now the guitar players will be learning this phrase to remember their strings, and it's Elvis ate donuts goodbye Elvis, and that helps them know the names of the strings. Well, your four your four strings are the same as their low four strings, so you have 
Elvis ate donuts good. You don't have the next two strings by or Elvis. So Elvis ate donuts good. And so those are the names of your four strings. Now, when we go to reading the music, you read in the bass clef. And the first note you're going to learn is the D note. So that's the Elvis ate donuts. That's the donut string, which is your, uh, right here. And, and the D is found on the third line up on the bass clef. Now, our, when we number our bass, when we number the clef, here are the lines. We number from the bottom, one, two, three, four, and five. So here is the D note. So look at your music. Example number one, they're all Ds, quarter notes and quarter rests. And uh, um, I'm gonna play it for you and you can play along with me once you learn it. It goes like this. Now, no fingers needed because it's an open string. An open means I don't put any fingers down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you might notice on the rests, I just lightly touch it with one of my fingers to stop it from ringing. Now, number two is the G. Now, that's that first string right there. Elvis ate donuts good. Um, number two is, the, is a G note, and it's found on the fourth space of your bass clef. Play along with me on this one. One, two, three, four. 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 Now number three mixes up the G and the D notes. And now we get to the playing the notes where you have to actually put your fingers down on the string in, in the particular frets to be able to make the notes. So let me teach you, um, you've already learned G and D. Let's learn the next two notes, E and F sharp. Here's how you do it. You're gonna be playing on the D string. Take your index finger, finger one, put it on the D string at the second fret. Now remember, not right on top of the fret, but right behind it. And, and you press down with your thumb on the back of the neck, you kind of make a C. And I just clamp down with my thumb and my index finger, thumb on the back of the neck, index finger on the second string at the second fret, and then I strike that second string with my right hand. There's my E. Okay? Now, to play the next note, the F sharp, I have to put my second finger down on that string and the third finger down on that string. So now I have three fingers down. I don't need these fingers down, but they help hold the, the, the string down. So I am going to use all th those three fingers down. I think he's not doing anything right now, so he's just hanging out. So they're all on the D string. Second fret, third fret, and the fourth fret. Now this note is an F sharp. Again, my fingers are nicely curled. I'm playing on the tips of my fingers. My thumb is on the back of the neck. So there's the F sharp. Now, look at example number four, and it starts with an F-sharp. F-sharp is found on the fourth line up on the bass clef. And, um, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. 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 Now I'm gonna skip number five. It just uses the F sharp and the D. So it jumps between those two. Number six uses an E, which is your index finger on the, the first finger on the D string at the second fret. Sounds like that. Here's number six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three. Now with those three notes, you'll learn to play hot cross buns. Hot cross buns starts with F sharp, goes to E, and then goes to D. 
and that's repeated. E, I'm sorry, F sharp, E, D. Then we do four Ds, and then four E's, and then we go back to F sharp, E, D. And that's hot cross buns. Of course, we'll play that steady with the steady beat. Now, the next part is when we play, when we're not reading notation on a staff, but we're playing um, along to a, what we call a lead sheet. And a lead sheet usually has a melody, maybe even some words, and it has a chord written above. The chord symbol tells you what notes you should be playing in your left hand. And what we're gonna do is if it says it's a D chord, you play the D string or the D note. And if it says an A chord, you're going to play an A note. So let's take a look at that. So for the song, he's got the whole world in his hands. It uses a D chord and an A chord. For the D chord, you'll play the D string, open. And for the A chord, you'll play the A string open. Now, even though I don't need to fret anything over here, I like to keep my fingers on the, you know, close to the strings. And what I can do is also muffle a string when, it's, um, when it comes to the end of its usefulness. So in other words, I play the D, and now I'm not pressing the fingers down, but I just have my fingers here. When I go to the A chord, I lightly touch my finger against that D so it no longer rings. And then I go and I play on the A string. If I don't muffle it, it just gets muddy. We don't want those two ringing at the same time. So when I'm done playing the A chord, I lightly touch it, I might touch it with my right hand thumb, and I go on to the D string and play that. So muffling can be done with the left hand or the right hand, which seems to be the most convenient at the time. So here's, um, for he's got the whole world in his hand, you'll see a D chord, and then two measures later, you see an A chord. What I'm gonna ask you to do is play first each measure, let it ring for a whole note. So for the first measure, it's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we go to the next measure, the third measure, and play one, two, three, four, one, two, three. The next measure, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Four. And with the melody, it would sound like this. Now, the song has a pick, we, have, we call it a pickup. He's got the, we are not gonna count that as part of the measure. So we start playing on the word whole. So it goes like this. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 The next time you play it, you might try half notes. And another time you might try quarter notes like this. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 And that's reading the notes on the, on the bass clef. And that's playing with a lead sheet. Those are the things we'll be working on in the first couple lessons. I hope that helps. Good luck. See you next time.